to Aesop Science Book Club. Uh, this month's book was The Hot Zone by Richard Preston. I really enjoyed reading this. I hope you guys did too. And let's talk about it. So The Hot Zone's about an outbreak of Ebola in a monkey lab in Virginia. And it goes into disgusting and gory detail about what it's like when you get Ebola. Um, a lot of this is obviously hyperbole. But Stephen King does say that it's the most terrifying first chapter of a book he's ever read, which is a pretty big honor coming from Stephen King. Time Magazine recently named the Ebola Fighters their person of the year, and we were just personally interested in what made epidemics so fascinating for humans. My personal fascination with epidemics started when I learned about the Black Plague in elementary school, and I read a lot of books about it. And I'm not the only one who's obsessed. Uh, there's so many books. There's Orcs and Crake by Margaret Atwood, there's The Cameron by Boccaccio, The Plague by Camus, movies like Children of Men, Contagion. There's so many references in pop culture. But what makes it so fascinating for us in the hot zone? A reason why the hot zone is so intriguing and horrifying is because Richard Preston uses three classic elements of horror storytelling. The first, tension, which is what makes you feel uncomfortable. The second, relevance, so something that you can identify with in his story. The third is visuals, using details that make the action unfold as if you're seeing it. There were a couple of things that stuck out for me thematically when I was reading The Hot Zone. The first one that I really, really liked thinking about was the invisible threat of a virus. So generally when something threatens you, it's running towards you and you can like hit it in the head with a baseball bat. But with a virus, it's invisible, so you don't feel as much control over it as you normally would. The second theme I found really fascinating in the hot zone was the idea of human chaos. So you sort of unveil everyone's true nature when you're dealing with an epidemic. I always think of that scene in the grocery store in Contagion where Matt Damon's taking his daughter and they're trying to find food, um, and it's just complete insanity. People are running in and looting the grocery store and that's when his character realizes that like stuff has gotten really really bad. Um, and there's this feeling that people are just almost animalistic when chaos comes upon them um, and it's really interesting when you think about epidemics because I think in a lot of ways this is the sort of fear that has taken over the world when we're thinking about Ebola. With fear comes a ton of misconceptions. There are lots of conspiracy theory videos on YouTube surrounding Ebola. There's a lot of people talking about it who have little knowledge or research about it. And there's a lot of people capitalizing on Ebola. And frankly, I think that that's all wrong. Ebola is a scary disease, but the way that Preston presented it in such a gruesome way is meant for shock value rather than education. And this kind of thinking is only going to continue to proliferate the fear and misconstrued understanding of Ebola. What strikes me when I think about the Ebola outbreak in West Africa is how uncontrollable it seems. In reality, it's less about the nature of the virus itself and more about the lack of medical infrastructure that's messing stuff up there. So with medical infrastructure, I'm talking about uh, access to biohazardous equipment, access to testing facilities, etc. There's actually a really curious part of the hot zone where the American military and the Center for Disease Control are trying to decide who is going to contain the Ebola outbreak in Virginia. And rather than considering public safety, they seem to just be considering their own pride when arguing about who will contain it that sort of struck me as weird and it's kind of ironic to consider that there's almost too much infrastructure in the western world rather than too little in west africa and that maybe this is something that we should consider more so than considering the fear of this tiny invisible virus so if i'm reading the hot zone there are two things that i think are very important to talk about the first one is that from chaos comes a lot of sweeping generalizations and stereotyping. We really, really need to be aware of the way that we talk about Ebola. So be wary of the way that the media portrays certain situations. Be wary of the way that even your friends are talking about Ebola. And if someone says something that you don't like about it, make sure that you start a discussion. Another thing to consider with this is that we can't forget about Ebola. The media is likely to lose interest in this soon, unfortunately. 
But as long as people are dying and this hasn't been eradicated, we still need to keep talking about it. So thanks so much for joining me in this discussion of The Hot Zone by Richard Preston. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. I bet you're wondering, what will our next book be? Sad. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Nye's Undeniable. Um, obviously you should read that because it's a Bill Nye book and everyone needs to read it. So just a little bit of housekeeping. We've decided to extend the length of time you have to read the books from one month to two months, uh, just so it's a little bit more manageable for you to get your hands on the book, to read it, and for you to interact with us about it. So we're gonna be doing another Google Hangout, which was really fun. Also, make sure that you hit us up on Reddit. Uh, there's lots of discussion that goes on there about the books. Uh, you can find the address right there. Also, we're gonna be checking our social media a ton, so our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Tumblr, um, make sure that you comment on whether or not you like the book. If you hate it, awesome. If you think it's uh, really boring, awesome. Let us know. We want to hear everything that you guys have to say. Um, and other than that, I'll see you in two months. But we'll talk before. Bye. And it goes into often disgusting pretty gory detail about what it's like when you get Ebola. Uh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs>